Hey everybody. So I told you I'd come back uh, when I was, uh, you know, ready to start screwing around with the eccentrics on the brakes. Um, they're really not all that difficult to mess with. There's a couple of methods to uh, to work on these things. Uh, one of them is you have a slit on your drum, uh, depending on what model uh, you have. And that is there so you can use feeler gauges between the drum and the brake shoe. Now, before we start going into this, remember that when you assemble your brakes, the long, you're gonna have two. You're gonna have a short pad and you're gonna have a long pad, okay? The long pad's always facing towards the front of the vehicle. So, you know, you're gonna have two sets that are gonna look opposite from each other because they, they all need to go that way. So just make sure that the short pads are on the back side of the vehicle. So, textbook says that these are called Lockheed hydraulic brakes, right? With two eccentric anchor pins and double piston cylinder. Now, if you wanna know what I'm reading from, Larry Jacobson turned me on to the Motors, okay, auto repair manual, 1954. Um, but these, these were on so many vehicles. And uh, when you go to the specific components inside here, um, uh, it'll go through Chevy, whatever, and there's a Willy section in there as well. But what I'm reading from is what you see here, okay? That's what we have to work with on our Jeeps. So if you're going to use the feeler gauge method, uh, looks like we're going to be looking for eight thousandths, okay, on the top adjusters and four thousandths on the bottom. So you simply have to rotate the drum, okay, and uh, get that slit in position, adjust the eccentric, just like you would on a set of points or anything else, and get that feeler gauge in there until you got just a little bit of a drag on it go ahead and lock that eccentric down. Um, if you don't have feeler gauges, then what the manual tells you to do, and I'm gonna read it directly from the book, okay, so you don't think Mike Watson's making this stuff up. It says the Lockheed, hydraulic double anchor brake with double piston cylinder, okay? Um, the eccentric anchor pins are used on all cars using this type of brake except 1939 and 48 Ford and Mercury. On these cards, eccentric washers are used with non-eccentric anchor pins. To make a minor adjustment, you see figure 66 and proceed as follows. Okay, so it, it, it puts you on there and it shows you, you know, what you, what you ought to be doing. Okay, uh, you go on eBay and find these old motors books, but they're, they're a wealth of uh, knowledge. So, beginning at any wheel, it says, turn one of the brake adjusting cams, right? until the brake shoe is held against the brake drum, locking the wheel. Very simple to do, and I'm gonna demonstrate it for you, okay? Then, you're gonna back off the cam just a little until the wheel just lets go where it's free, okay? And then you're gonna follow the same procedure with the other adjusting cam on the same brake shoe. So you're gonna do on the same side, all right? Um, uh, once you do that, um, you're going to repeat that process on all of the all of the wheels okay and then from there you can apply and release the brakes check each of the wheels to make sure they all spin freely so if your drums are not turned um plus you know there's some there's some little axle wear and stuff like that you may get a ch 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 when the wheels are spinning that's because the the drums could be warped it could you know these old things things just aren't perfectly aligned so i wouldn't worry about that too much because it's going to wear in but it is what it is. So I'm going to move the camera over and I'm gonna show you on the back side of the plate uh, what we're doing and, and do what this book tells us to do, okay? And we'll go from there. All right. <clears throat> you can see that, I don't think you can see the drum on the video spinning. All right, but what it's asking us to do you have, uh, let's see, this will be the uh, 9 16 nut up here, okay? And when this is tight, that's gonna secure that eccentric adjustment, okay? Don't need to worry about that right now. This is the smaller one, so we're gonna use the smaller wrench. And as you turn this, it wants us to turn this enough that 
and it locks the wheel, okay? And that's pretty. All right, that wheel's not turning. I'm gonna back it off just a hair, okay? Then I'm gonna tighten this. Now you're gonna to wanna to hold this in place as you tighten. Come on now. The eccentrics are kind of old. I didn't. One thing I didn't do is I didn't replace these eccentrics. So, I'm sure I got. I still have some. That's a little tight. Back that off a notch. Okay. All right, and we're going to do the same thing down here. All right, that locked the bottom. We're going to loosen it just a hair until it's free. Just turn. That locked it. Three quarter inch. Hold this one in place. Yeah, wait a minute. Come on, Mike. That one moved just a hair. Okay, I still got movement. Not too shabby. Yeah, I already tightened that side. Okay, we're good. Let's fire up the beast, get it in gear, and hit the brakes once and see what happens. adjustment worked all right try and get this done before uh, before you get it on the road all right she's good to go so here's that slit in the drum and that's where you'll take your measurements at uh, with a feeler gauge if that's the way you choose to do it okay your drum is not broken it's supposed to have that little slit in it okay well, that's pretty much it uh, there really is no rocket science to it. Look, if you got a few extra bucks, go on eBay and just and pull you up a motors uh, auto repair manual. You can get them for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, whatever, but there's a ton of them out there. Um, this one happens to be 1954, but it goes from 54 back, right? Way back. So, you know, if you're sporting something that's in the 40s or whatever, it's all good. Let me check this out. They got a section just on willies in here. All the general specifications, uh, valve specifications, tune-up specs. Uh, man, what else is in there? Just everything. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. 
the Autolite Distributor Index and Specifications. Uh, that's pretty awesome. First serial and engine numbers. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, so there's a lot on here. It talks about engine markings, um, passenger cars, uh, how, to, how to do valve grinding on this motor, you know, the way they did it back in the day. And boy, would it be cool to have old school tools to be able to do things the way they did it the old fashioned way. Yeah, they freaking earned it, man. Um, it was none of this computerized crap and, and, and stuff. People got their hands dirty. But um, I love this book. And they're, they're just crankshaft oil seals, oil pams, oil pumps, crankshaft end play. Yeah. From 1940 to 54, except the 226 engine. All kinds of stuff in here. Then it goes over the 226, talks about how to do that. Um, it tells you everything. And uh, it's just, it's an extra resource you could have at your fingertips. Um, you know, you can collect the books and put them on the shelf and never touch them. But these babies meant to be opened. They said, oh yeah. Gotta love them antiques, man. Um, Everything. Clutch pedal adjustment. I'm going to be reading that. Right? 40 to 51. The pedal free movement should be three quarters to one inch. This adjustment is made by adjusting the length of clutch control cable seen in figures 16 and 17. Yeah. So right there you go. Three quarters to an inch adjustment. Right? You need to know that stuff. All right, folks. Get out there. Get your books. Read them books. Don't do anything unsafe. And uh, thanks for watching. All right? That's it. I'm done. Have a good night. Watson's Wagons out of here. Oh, go work on your cheese, will you?